invite you and we move out of the way so you can come you can come and have
never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working you never stop, you never stop working you never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it Father, that is who you are, Lord. You are. You are, Jesus. Mighty. You are awesome. You are all-powerful. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are and who you're making us to be, Lord confident in you, our maker, our provider, our way maker, our everything. 
You are more than enough, Lord. More than enough. And you're a God that never fails and his plan will always overcome any obstacle that the enemy has. You turn it into a victory, God, because you are so, so good. And that is who you are. Come on with your own words. That is who you are. You are so good. You are so mighty. You are so holy. You are our everything. You are our Lord. That is who you are, Jesus. That is who you are, Lord. Hallelujah. If you guys believe that this morning, let's give the Lord an offering, a praise of offering this morning. God, that is who you are. You're so mighty. You're so amazing. Woo. It's something about being together, right? We could just stay here all day. Pastor would probably throw something at me. No, I'm just kidding. He wouldn't. But we're excited you guys are here this morning. Uh, we just ask that you guys, uh, those who couldn't make it, maybe friends and family that are out of town or uh, just maybe weren't comfortable coming yet, and that's okay, just let them know that we'll have this service later on uh, this afternoon or tomorrow, so that way they don't skip a beat and they're still with us. Amen. 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 Pastor, it's your turn. Okay, now we're going. Now we're going. All right. Can everybody hear me? All right. Okay. I'm going to talk to you this way. Hey, good morning. It's good to see you all here today. I appreciate you coming. Appreciate you making an effort to be in, in the house of the Lord today. I, I agree with Stephanie. There's something special when we gather together. And we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And he is able to move among us. He's able to bring healing. He's able to bring restoration. He's able to bring goodness to our life. And we're so thankful and grateful for who he is and what he does for us. We want to pray this morning. I'm going to ask you to pray with me for all those who have been affected by this pandemic. You know people. Um, we know people. We know people who have died. We know people who have become very sick. We know others who have, who have just sailed through it with no problems, uh, seemingly. But listen, all of us have been affected. And so we want to pray to God that he would bring an end to it, that he would bring healing, that he would bring strength, that he would bring power that he would bring an anointing. We know it's the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage, and that's exactly what this is. It's a yoke of bondage. But thank God he gives us freedom. He gives us power. Amen. So let's pray today. Let's just, let's just invoke the presence of God and, and just pray. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and your mercy in our life. Lord, we are so grateful to you for who you are, for what you mean to us, Father, we thank you, God, that you're on the throne of our life, and nothing can change that. Father, we pray for those who have been affected by this pandemic, God. We, we pray for those who have lost loved ones, Lord. We, we lift them to you, and we pray that you, the God of all comfort, would comfort them and bring them peace and bring them understanding, Father. And we pray for those who have been uh, sick, Lord, that you would bring healing to their life. Father, we just pray, ask you for rest restoration this morning. We ask you for your strength, your power to be our power, your strength to be our strength, God, that you would just renew us in the hope of your coming. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Praise God. Well, thank you for being here this morning. It's time for us to receive the Lord's tithe and our offering today, and we thank you in advance for your 
faithfulness in supporting the work of the kingdom, uh, just remember to drop it in one of these boxes on the four columns or there's some on the walls around the exterior of the sanctuary. And then normally we greet one another. We hug. We shake hands. We're friendly, right? Well, be friendly. Just don't hug anybody. Just don't, just give them a fist bump or wave at them. But greet one another in the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you for the opportunity to give to you. But we just give willfully and cheerfully. And we know you're at work and you're on the throne. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Thank you for your giving and your faithful support for the work that goes on here. If you if you have a child uh, with you and you brought a phone or an iPad, you can go to our website, HobbsFirstAssembly.org, and they can connect there with uh, with the um, a program Shelley's uh, prepared for them. They can watch that and interact with that. There's coloring book and colors and all of those kind of things for your kids uh, to keep them um, occupied this morning. All right, so I'm going to begin a new series today. Today is Pentecost Sunday. One of the reasons we wanted to meet today is just a huge celebration of Pentecost, and we are a Pentecostal uh, church. Well, there are so many questions concerning the Holy Spirit and questions about of what he means to us and what he what he does for us and how he helps us and how he works in our life so the name of our series this morning is question and answers about the holy spirit so we're gonna we're gonna look into that we're gonna we got several weeks planned we're, we're just gonna we're gonna take some very common questions well our question today is what is Pentecost? What is the what is the big deal? What is what is the day about? What does it mean to us? What does it what does it represent for us as a as a Pentecostal church? Well, well, I will just start by telling you this: Pentecost is actually it just simply means fifty, and it's the fiftieth day after the resurrection. We all know we. We missed Easter today. We didn't get to celebrate Easter together, but we get to celebrate today. And it's just, it just simply means 50 days after the resurrection of, of Jesus. It's, it's based upon the Feast of Pentecost. And so, so we're going to look at that. Jesus knew the men who followed him. He, he knew their, their weaknesses. He knew their, their, their temperaments. He knew their shortcomings. He knew their, their problems. He even knew their misguided zeal. Remember, Peter cut the ear off of the guy in, in the garden, and, and he promised to go with Jesus until, and even if it cost him his life, and, and we know that didn't happen. We know he, he denied Jesus three, three times. Well, Jesus knew that only the abiding of the Holy Spirit in our life could transform those men and women into great witnesses, <clears throat> and only the abiding of the Holy Spirit can transform us 
and make us a fit representative for the kingdom of heaven. It's the only way we could accomplish all that he has asked us or, or called upon us to accomplish. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 16, he said, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter, another helper that he may abide with you forever. That he may abide with with you forever. So, so Jesus has promised us that the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to stay with us forever. How many of you know Jesus couldn't stay forever? He was only one person, one place at one time, but the Holy Spirit is everywhere. He's, all, he's touching everyone. It, it doesn't matter whether we're having service here at Hob First Assembly this morning or whether you're at home watching us on, on television or, or, or whether, whether you attend a different church or whatever, wherever, the Holy Spirit is with us always. And he's always working in us. And he's always shaping us and, and forming us. And Jesus went on to say in John chapter 16, verse 7, he said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away, that Jesus goes away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus very plainly said it's important that the Holy Spirit come. Now, here's what we know about the Holy Spirit. We know that he is literally the third person of, of the Godhead. We know that we have God the Father. We know we have God the Son. And we know we have God the Holy Spirit. They're all equal. They all have different offices and different responsibilities. But they're all one God and the Holy Spirit is just as much God as the Father is. He's just as much God as Jesus is, but he's here among us, working among us. We, we feel those, those goosebumps running up and down our spine. That's the Holy Spirit. We feel that tugging on our heart. That's the Holy Spirit. We feel that anointing that floods over us. That is the Holy Spirit. Spirit. The Holy Spirit is more than just the third person of the Trinity. It was the Holy Spirit that moved upon the face of the waters in Genesis chapter 1. He moved with power and conviction on the day of Pentecost when he was outpoured. He fills us with himself and, and he, he convicts us. The Holy Spirit abides with us forever. He's the comforter. He's our teacher. Jesus said at one point, you have no need that any man teach you because... The Holy Spirit will teach you. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He's the glorifier of Jesus. And he reproves men and he empowers men to be witnesses unto him. We're sanctified by the Spirit. God's word was given to us to men who were moved upon by the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit affirms our relationship with Jesus as his children. No wonder Jesus said it was important that he go away so that he could send the comforter. He could send our helper. He could send our teacher. He could send our guide. As long as Jesus was with them, the Holy Spirit was not in them, wasn't with them, wasn't empowering them, wasn't transforming them. Up until now, they had been observers. Now they were to be leaders and witnesses. They were to become the church that Jesus died for. Until now, they had been accompanied by him, but now they were going to go for him. They were going to proclaim the name of Jesus to the, to the uttermost parts of the world. They needed the power of the Holy Spirit. Up until now, they had heard of Jesus. And now they were going to be the ones speaking for Jesus. I, I think it's interesting that God had no other plan but through men would the gospel be proclaimed. Through, through no other means, no other way. It's like, it's like God the Father was setting up in heaven and, 
And an angel looked down at him when he saw the plan of God unfolding and, and he saw that it was going to depend upon mankind to preach the gospel, to, to proclaim the love of Jesus, to, to do all of those things that Jesus had actually been doing and performing all the miracles that was going to be left up to man. And, and this angel asked God the Father, what's, what's plan B? God the Father said, I have no plan B. This is it. It's down to you and I. It's up to you and I to preach Jesus, to, to lift him up, to make sure that the next generation knows who he is. Well, on the day of Pentecost, they were fully, they were fully engaged. They were fully empowered. They were fully equipped by the Holy Spirit to do the work that God wanted them to do. So here's our question. What is Pentecost? Well, I've got five answers for you. I'm not going to take very long, but I'm going to go through them very quickly. Number one, Pentecost is a promise. It is a, it's a promise to you and I that, that we can live in this power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. That promise is, is the coming of the Comforter, the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry into Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Jesus knew how, how important it was for the disciples to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. He knew how important it was for them. And he said, wait in Jerusalem. Wait there until the outpouring comes, until you're endued with power from on high. In Joel chapter 2, we have an Old Testament prophecy of the day of Pentecost. And here's what Joel prophesied hundreds of years before the day that it was actually fulfilled. <coughs> Joel said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. It was prophesied hundreds of years before the day of Pentecost was actually fulfilled, but we see exactly those kind of things happening. Peter went on to say this promise was to you and to your sons and to all those who are afar off. What he meant was, for you and I, over 2,000 years later, the promise is still for us. The promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the coming comfort, the promise of our teacher and our guide to come upon us, to live within us, to move in us, to empower us, to equip us, to, to challenge us, to be the church that we are destined to be, that we are called. To be Pentecost is a promise that was fulfilled and is still being fulfilled every single day of our life, every single moment of our existence. Well, number two, Pentecost is associated with prayer. Prayer is almost synonymous with the Holy Spirit. Paul urged the Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he said this, he said, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, with all your requests, with all your thanksgiving. Praying always in the Spirit. I love the word in, in that whole verse of Scripture. In fact, in verse 20 of the book of Jude, he encourages his audience, but you, beloved, building up yourselves, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying with the help of the Holy Spirit. That word in is a wonderful word. It has basically a twofold meaning. It, 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 it means this, number one, in the language of the Spirit. I'm going to talk about that more in the weeks to come. But listen, here's what I'm convinced. Jesus has for each individual believer a prayer language that he wants every single one of us to use and to pray in. 
I'm going to talk about it more in just a few moments. But, but so it's in the language of the Spirit. And then number two, in the arena of the Spirit. We're, that, that means we're so covered, so filled, so led by the Spirit, we pray the way he directs us to pray. We pray according to the will of God when we're praying in the Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 7, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Paul gives us in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, he said, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit has a language that he wants to pray to each of us. I may not understand it. I may not comprehend it, although we, we do believe in the gifts of the Spirit where there's a, a message in tongues and an interpretation of those tongues. But this is different than that. This is just this idea that every single believer can have this prayer language, you may not know what you're saying, but the Spirit knows what you're saying. You may not understand what's going on, but, but the Holy Spirit knows what's going on, and He can use you to pray according to the will of God when you don't have a clue what the will of God is. He's that kind of a God, and He loves us that much. I love this quote by Paul Lohenberg. Paul said this, he puts utterance to our sighs, words to our groanings, and prays out his will through us. How many of you know when you pray the will of God, God's going to answer? He's always going to answer when we pray in the Spirit. It's a powerful, powerful illustration that you and I can can glean from and know. All right, so number three, Pentecost is purifying. Pentecost is purifying. In Luke chapter three, uh, John answered and saying to all, uh, this is John the Baptist. He came early, he came preaching the gospel, he came preaching the kingdom of heaven, he came preaching repentance. And, and he was always pointing to Jesus, always preaching about Jesus. He said, I indeed baptize you with water, but one who is mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So we know Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. He's the one that empowers us. He's the one that gives us this Holy Spirit. He's the one that moves and works in our life to empower us. Pentecost is purifying. Here's what we know about fire. Fire purifies. Fire cleanses. Fire purges. We have this, this illustration given to us clearly uh, uh, about a about a, 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 a goldsmith who's purifying that gold. He, he'll turn up the heat. He'll, he'll build a little bit of hotter fire under the gold so that the impurities can be washed out, so the impurities can be made uh, less and less and less. And here's how he knows that, that when that gold is pure, he can look down in that pot of boiling gold and see his clear reflection. Well, that's the way the Holy Spirit works in our life. He purifies us. He cleanses us. He, he purges us little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. He works in us to make us into the image of Jesus, to make us look like him, to make us act like him, to make us walk like him, to make us talk like him. Christ's purpose in coming to earth is to be a bridge, according to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27, that he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be homely 
not homely. But that she should be holy. There's a difference between homely and holy. But that she should be holy and without blemish. That's the purpose of Christ. The Holy Spirit is to make men holy. There was this idea that was perpetrated decades ago that we had to get rid of all of the bad parts of our life before the Holy Spirit could come and live in us and dwell in us. I, I've heard it said, I've heard it preached, that once you get rid of all the sin in your life, then the Holy Spirit can come. Listen, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to help you with that sin, to help you deal with it, to help you put it in the right perspective, to help you put it in the right place. He, he comes to an unclean vessel to make them clean, to make them pure, to make them holy, to make them righteous in the eyes of God. All right, so number four, Pentecost is preaching. We read in Acts chapter 2, after that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the 120 in the upper room. Somehow it spilled out into the street downstairs from the upper room. I, I've been in an upper room in Jerusalem that was obviously, um, it wasn't the exact upper room, but it was a similar upper room, one they thought could have been it. So I've been in this upper room, beautifully acoustic, nice sound. But in this moment, when they were 120 people in the upper room and the Holy Spirit was poured out on them, cloven tongues as a fire sat upon each of them. Somehow that spilled out into the street and, and a crowd began to gather. Thousands of people were in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Thousands of people were there to, to enjoy this great feast that was, that was going on. And they heard this disturbance. They heard 120 people freshly filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit praying in their own tongues. Peter, they, they began to ask, what does this mean? What, what's going on? What's happening? Peter stood up and began to preach. Peter said this in, in Acts chapter 2, verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. Heed my words. And Peter preached a message that you can read in about 15 minutes. But he preached this great message. 3,000 people were added to the church that day. 3,000 people asked questions, what do we got to do to be saved? 3,000 people came to know who Jesus was that day. Pentecost is about preaching. It's about pro proclaiming the, the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that will lead a man to repentance. Man. Pentecost is about preaching it's about proclaiming it's it's not just me up here preaching to you but it's you preaching to your family it's you proclaiming the goodness of God to your neighbors to your friends to your co-workers that's what Pentecost is about once quiet and frightened men now proclaim the word of God with boldness with with a sincerity with a with a truth that that resonates in the hearts and lives of men and women listen the holy spirit is here to empower you to proclaim the good news of jesus Amen. he's here to empower you to preach the gospel to the lost jesus was anointed by the spirit of god to preach the gospel he he told the disciples now i want you to go into all the world and Preach the gospel. Paul's last word to Timothy was preach the word. It's the same word that's given to you and I. We have a responsibility to preach the word. We've got a responsibility to share the love of Jesus with everyone we come in contact with. We have a responsibility. Pentecostal preaching is not about how loud you shout, but it's about how inspired you are about what you're saying. Listen, I, I remember I remember once I, I'm preaching and 
I remember shouting from the first word to the last word. It was just at the top of my voice. It was, it was, afterwards I asked myself the question, what was that about? Can I tell you, it's not about how loud you shout, but it's about that anointing that abides within. And that same anointing abides in me, abides in you. And it's there for you to share the gospel, to preach the gospel. Pentecostal preaching is intelligent, it's gracious, and sincere preaching. It's preaching the grace of God. It's preaching the salvation of God. It's preaching the love of God, the power and, and the mercies of God, the miracle-working power of God. Just sharing your story. Pentecostal preaching, lastly, is about the second coming of Jesus. It's about the blessed hope. It's about the rapture of the church that all of us need to be prepared for. All right, so number five, Pentecost is power. Here's the final one. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, what's interesting when you look up the word witnesses in this verse of Scripture, chapter 1 verse 8, it literally carries the meaning of martyr. Jesus told the disciples, you're going to be martyred for me. And we know that was true. Every one of them, except for John, who was exiled on the Isle of Patmos, every single disciple became a martyr for Jesus. Well, how many of you know it's going to take the anointing of the Holy Spirit for us to become martyrs? It's going to take a special anointing. It's going to take a special gift to those who have witnessed unto death. But can I tell you this? It is no secret that men and women today need a power, not of our own, to be this kind of a witness. To be a martyr, yes, but to be a witness just in general. To be someone who's willing to share their story with a lost and a dying and a hurting world. We need the power of Pentecost. If the weak are to become strong, the faltering to become courageous, if the foolish are to become wise, the bashful to become bold, if the double-minded are to become people of strong conviction, then there must be a supernatural infilling of power from the Holy Spirit for every single one of us. Listen to me. You and I need power to confront the enemy. There's an enemy out there. There is a devil out there who would love to do nothing but devour you, devour your children, devour your family, devour your marriage, devour everything. We must have power beyond ourselves, beyond our own ability to confront the enemy. We've got to have power to contend for the faith. We've got to have power to stand up for those things that we believe in. We've got to have power to, 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 to contend, contend for those essential things that I talked about a few weeks ago, those things that are important for the church to believe and to hold on to. We've got to have power to communicate the gospel. We've got to have power to conduct the miraculous. How many of you know miraculous signs don't happen because we want them to? They don't happen because we believe them to but they happen because we're infilled with power from on high. And the power comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. He is the he, he, he alone is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Pentecost brought a level of spiritual life unattainable by human effort. Pentecost empowers us to live a life that is beyond us. It's greater than us. It's, it's stronger than us. It's, it's, it's more than we could ever muster on our own. It's more than we could ever dream of on our own. Pentecost brought the gifts of the operation of the Spirit. 
brought the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Pentecost is important and it's vital to us today. Pentecost energized the church into a dynamic force, one that's still going on today, one that lives on today, one that can be preached and proclaimed today. So stand with me, will you? Josh, you're going to lead us in a song here. here or you're listening and you 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 recognize there needs to be a change in your life God needs to do something otherwise the road you're headed down is just going to be a just going to it's going to be a dead end it's going to be a bad place can I tell you this Jesus can change your heart he came to live that we may live. He came to die that we could have life and that more abundantly. So this morning, if you're here or you're listening, you're watching this, can I, can I just encourage you, just, just trust him, just lean on him, just depend on him. He is the enough God and he's able. He's able to meet every need in your life. He's able to take that which the enemy meant for evil, that which the enemy meant for bad, and turn it to good. He's able to transform it, make it something powerful, make it something great, make it something awesome. That's what he does. That's how he works. That's how he moves. So let me just encourage you. If you're here or you're listening, would you just say this simple prayer? With me, church, I'm going to ask you just to repeat this prayer with me. Just, just say it out loud, bold, proclaim it. If you're here and you want to know Jesus, all you got to do is say this prayer. There's nothing magical about the prayer, but it's just letting Jesus know that you're ready and you ask him to forgive you of your sins. And here's what we know. What we ask him to do, he will do. He will do. So will you just pray this with me? Father God, I come in the name of Jesus. 
I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for Jesus. Lord Jesus, would you come into my heart, forgive me of my sin, become the Lord of my life. Help me take those things that the enemy has used for bad and turn them to good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, if you prayed that prayer, all of heaven is rejoicing right now. All of heaven is celebrating. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Today's a new day for you. It's going to begin a brand new day for you. Amen. Hey, Josh is going to sing one more verse of this song. And let's just celebrate the goodness of God together. Let's just worship him as he sings, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you today for the, the day of Pentecost that we get to celebrate and experience your goodness and your mercy afresh and anew in our heart and our life. Your word declares your mercies are new every day, every morning. Lord, we celebrate that. Thank you for the gift of your son. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for empowering us to live an overcoming Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. You've honored the Lord. Honor him one more time with a clang clap of praise. Thank you. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.